front rehabilitation. Welcome back to the Six Human Revolution here on Serious Gaming on the Give Me the Six difficulty. Okay, let's go see Seraph. Big guy Who wants to see me. All right. Welcome to Seraph Industries. Can I put the bullet in Tigard's head? Excuse me. Mr. Jensen, isn't it? Sir, you have that charity dinner? In a moment, Isaiah. I was hoping I might run into you, Mr. Jensen. Bill Taggart. The founder of the Humanity Front. I know who you are. Yes. Yes, I imagine you do. As David Sarah's top security man, I imagine you have quite the file on me. But I assure you, Mr. Jensen, I am devastated by recent events. Really? I do not support what you and your company are doing to mankind. I believe it's extremely dangerous. But abolishing human enhancement technologies will only be achieved through legal means. I'll keep that in mind. This is your first day back since the accident six months ago, isn't it? Sir, we have to go. What happened to me was no accident. Ah, oh, my mistake. But it must have been stressful facing down a second incident so soon. I imagine it brought back all kinds of unpleasant memories. I appreciate your concern, Mr. Taggart. But it was nothing I couldn't handle. I'm a psychologist, Mr. Jensen. I know when a man is hiding behind words. The flesh may heal, but the mind is not always so resilient. You might want to keep that in mind. Now, if you'll be so kind as to excuse me. I'm curious about something, Mr. Taggart. What is it you hope to accomplish by coming here tonight? I would think that would be obvious. Your company has been viciously targeted. The violence and bloodshed that's occurred, it, it must be stopped. But I'm afraid it won't be until men of wisdom and understanding come to an agreement. About what? About the future, Mr. Jensen. This enhancement technology threatens to change the course of human evolution, to redefine what it even means to be human. You think governments can afford to let that go unregulated? You can't stop progress, Mr. Taggart. Perhaps not. But neither can we afford to sit by and watch it happen on its own. Not when we have the ability, the collective will, and foresight to influence it. I see. Thank you for illuminating me. Anytime. Foreshadowing, huh? Foreshadowing. Right there, come on. Here, this is for you. It's a corporate passport encoded with your biometrics. I've set up a false flag routing which should get you to Hensha Island without any problems. You're sending me to China? What about FEMA? FEMA's got nothing to do with this, trust me. We'll have better luck in China. How can you say that? I saw the bastard who killed Megan pulling his men out of that facility. I left one of those men dead in its underground storage bay. I know that, Adam. Frank was monitoring the whole thing. So I also know that before he died, that man gave you an address in China. I want you to check it out. That doesn't make any sense. Look, Adam. There's a reason this company's under attack. You think it has to do with the typhoon or with some other top secret military project that I haven't told you about? The thought had crossed my mind. Yeah, well, it doesn't. The work Megan's team was doing before they were killed, it was redefining what it means to be human. This company, Seraph Industries, was about to lead mankind to its next stage in human development, self-controlled evolution. Can't you see how scary that can be to some people? Sure. I also see how lucrative it can be for some others. It's never been about money for me, Adam. But you're right. There are people out there who don't exactly feel the same. Like who? I'm hoping you'll be able to find that answer for us in China. So get going. Farida's prepping the chopper. Okay, we're going to China, and I cannot leave Seraph Industries. All right. So, going directly to China. Where the hell are you, Jensen? I haven't gone all night. I told you, I had to brief Seraph first. I see. I guess I never realized how much of a brown noser you were. 
I'm not a brown noser, Francis. I just enjoy keeping you on edge. Ten minutes, Jensen. Make it snappy. Okay, let's go talk with this guy. Pritchard! Oh, I want to punch that guy in the face so desperately. And I am not the only one who feels like that, I bet. I am most certainly not the only person who feels like that. At least I would hope so. What do you want? As much as I hate to admit it, I need your help. That signal you shut down in DRB territory. It's been active for almost a year. You're telling me someone outside this company has had access to our network since before the first attack? I've detected intrusions before and shut them down swiftly every time. But whoever designed this particular algorithm is good. Very good. You've told Seraph? See, here's the thing. The intrusions were possible because of a backdoor access into our security system that I never even knew existed. The one Sanders team used to get inside our plant. I've worked here for seven years, Jensen, and this is the first time I've seen that particular access route. David Sarif created it specifically to bypass the firewall. He's hiding something, and I think you should find out what it is. Why me? Because, as far as I can tell, Sarif created that access and was streaming a lot of data through it shortly after your ex-girlfriend suggested he hire you. Okay, let's see what Seraph has to say. Actually, not this way. Or... Hmm. Interesting, so I was circling around like an idiot for no good reason. Alright. Let's go up. Let's see what the boss has to say again. And then we're going to China. Boss, we need to talk. Is something wrong? I'm not sure. Did you set up a private access route to bypass the company firewall right before you hired me? <laughs> I what? Pritchard said someone's been using it to access our system since before the first attack. The security measures he and I set in place never stopped them because we didn't even know the loophole existed. Oh, I see. Frank's fixed that, though, right? He has now, but he's wondering why you never mentioned it. Frank's paranoid, Adam. You know that. Can a busy man forget things once in a while? You streamed an awful lot of data through that portal, boss. Right before you brought me on board, Preacher may be paranoid, but I gotta admit, I'm wondering what was in it too. Yeah, as an ex-cop, I guess you would. But the important thing is, you found the hole and plugged it. We're secure now. And the information you uncovered in that FEMA facility may actually help us track these guys. So let's just stay focused on what's important. You went behind my back on this one, boss. With all due respect, you hired me to keep this place secure. But I can't do that if you are not 100% straight with me. Why are you getting so defensive? All I'm saying is we should be looking forward, Adam, not back. Right now, this company is on the brink of something phenomenal. Something that can change mankind forever. And there are a lot of people out there who want to see us fail. I need dedicated warriors to help me win this. I never told you, but Frank wanted me to subcontract our physical security needs to an outside PMC. I chose you, because I know how important loyalty is to you. Don't get me wrong, boss. I'm not questioning your leadership. I'm just concerned that the data you streamed might have been compromised, accessed by the hacker who attacked us. 
If so, how do you suggest I handle it? I see. I guess I hadn't considered that. But I still don't know that you need to. I just wonder if you're being a bit paranoid here. Fixating on details that aren't critical? I mean, are you so shaken up by what happened six months ago by your failure to make a difference then that you can't roll with the punches anymore? Damn it, Adam! I brought you back in today because you have an immediate crisis to deal with. Questioning me about things that don't matter isn't going to bring Megan back. Megan? Boss, what does Megan have to do with any of this? I thought we were discussing a security breach. We were. She, she doesn't. I mean, Adam, you're missing the point. The data I streamed had nothing to do with Megan or her work. It was just a routine fact-finding check that sprang from one of our discussions. The kind of check I have to run quite often around here, believe it or not. Now, if somebody backtraces the transmission and gets a look at it, I very much doubt they'll know what to do with it. Trust me, we're fine. I would like nothing better than to trust you with this, boss. But trust is a two-way street, and the way you've handled this entire conversation so far makes me think that it's you who isn't trusting me. Why, boss? What is it you're so afraid to tell me? Adam, of course I trust you, son. And it's not that I'm afraid to tell you the truth. It's just that, honestly, I'm afraid you'll take it the wrong way. All right, look, the truth is, I set up a confidential data channel for a private investigator, someone who can run covert background checks on people, potential new recruits like you. You what? I had to, Adam. You were a liability, remember? You'd just been fired from SWAT. Now, Megan believed in you, but I had to be sure. Look, I don't want this to come between us. I'll send the files to your computer. You can see for yourself what he dug up. But Adam, you'd better be sure. Why? What do you mean? I mean sometimes the past should stay in the past. Once you see that data, you can't unring the bell. I'll understand if you want to read the files immediately, but please don't forget your priorities. Farid is waiting to take you to China. Okay, so that's... What I got, he was checking out Adam. There are some dirty secrets in that data, aren't there? Secrets that Sarah thinks that Jensen doesn't necessarily want to know. I don't remember exactly what was in the data. It's been a while since I've played this game. But let's just say that when it comes to Megan, and Adam, things are not exactly perfect. Okay. Hmm. Uh, what? Okay. So. So, I see. Okay, so Jensen was not the biological son of these two, okay. Mm-hmm.
antidepressants, needed regular prescriptions. One minute the Adam doesn't exist, and the next minute the Jensen's have themselves a bouncing and healthy five-year-old. That's when they pulled their vanishing act, so on a hunch I sniffed around some more, and sure enough, the Jensen's had tried adopting kids from several Michigan agencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was adopted, okay. Problems with authority figures, a disregard for the chain of command, anger management issues, and potential PTSDs. So here it is, the evaluation uh, reads like fiction. I'm thinking a pissed off superior wanted Jensen off the force and had the evaluation warded to read like just cause. But most of the rank and file I spoke to respected and liked Jensen. They thought he was a real straight shooter, even though the SWAT incident soured his reputation a little. Still, even my source liked him enough to keep uh, his psych eval buried. Okay. Actually, before I go to China, uh, China let's Athena see. Athena tells me you spoke mm. to Sarath. Did he happen to tell you why he made us look like idiots? I'm handling it. You can imagine how relieved I am to hear that. I'll tell you what. While you follow any lead Sarath spoon feeds you, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and backtrace that signal. That's your pride, dogging. Still, get back to me if you find something. You meant when? Pretty sure I didn't. Uh, okay. Right. His pride is talking. Absolutely. Pritchard not being prideful. I can't imagine that. <laughs> I really can't imagine Pritchard not being a prideful fool. Arrogant, prideful fool. It's his greatest weakness. Can be exploited, by the way. Although he's mostly a support character. Doesn't really have a major part in the story. Just to be there. To be the voice in a headpiece. Okay, so they're right there. I guess Night City in uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is probably gonna look similar to this, or I guess it will be a lot darker and a lot creepier with a lot more people. Also, of course, larger, but that goes without saying. So, that's how I imagine it would look. Hmm. That's a load of bullshit. Because it says, oh, look, you can go through here. Except you cannot. The right side, however, might allow you to. Yep, you can't. Alright, through here. Up we go. It's on this floor. Welcome. I'm glad you came. I can never properly repay you for what you did, of course, but I would like to help out any way I can. What do you have in mind? There's a gentleman named Seurat who works in the area. His business causes him to move around quite a bit, but at the moment he's occupying an apartment in a building on Earl's Court. If you mention my name, he'll give you a discount on his wares. He deals in... Well, he's a gun runner. How does a guy like you know someone like that? Growing up in my old neighborhood, you learn pretty quick to cultivate certain types of relationships. I see. Well, I guess... 
I guess I understand that. Cultivate certain type of types of relationships, or you're dead, pretty much. Or you're at the mercy of the gangs, essentially. And that's the issue a lot of people have. Either way. That's about it. I'm going to go to China right now. Right in this video. Not going to wait for the next one to do that. Hmm. The metro system. Well, subway, whatever. We call it metro here in Eastern Europe. That's where the name comes from, Metro, Last Light Metro 2033. I don't know why the name, the difference in names, but it is like that. There is a reason, I imagine, but, yeah. Oh, wait. Let's go see Farida. Oh, I'm being a fucking idiot here. Oh, great, I actually did have to climb over these stairs and go for here. I will not be accompanying Mr. Tiger to the charity dinner tonight. I must head to Utah instead. Rehabilitation center? Rehabilitation center? Hmm. Hey, Jensen. The boss said you were on your way. You're gonna love Hangsha. You've been there? Used to live there. I spent three, maybe four years working in the upper city, and most of my nights having fun in the lower one. You ready to go? I thought I was. How long is this gonna take, Malik? You mean the flight or the fun afterward? Don't worry, we'll be there before you know it. Climb in. On a VTOL. Well, I don't know. We do have the technology right now, supposedly, to make flights between London and Sydney take two hours. Supposedly, it's not implemented yet. Jensen, you might want to get ready. The jewel of the Yangtze approaches. Son of a bitch. I'm supposed to find answers in that. Hey, twice the scum and half the space. Hang on, we're going in. The address you got off that Merc, Hangsha Court Gardens. It's a bit of a walk from here in the Yuzhou district, but I figured it might be best not to drop you too close. In case Barrett only gave up the address, knowing I'd walk into another trap. It's the kind of thing I'd do to an enemy. You want my advice? Just find out who lives there and get out. Okay, here we are. Here we are. China. Bloody China. Yeah, this thing is insane, like, really insane as a concept for a city. Who the hell would build something like this? And it's Chinese construction. I, n Oops. I know things are, let's just say there's a lot of misconceptions with regards to that, but still, I would not want to live in such a city. I guess people who do live who would live in such a city would get used to it eventually, but yeah, screw that. Anyway, Kostin here on Serious Gaming, signing out, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more.